Either way, today we're going to show you an easy way to make tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. Fresh garden tomatoes. We're doing it with personal chef Bill Collins from ChefBill.com, who never gets earrings in his stew. I have never lost a tomato while cooking. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I've never lost an earring while cooking. Tomatoes oh, I've lost. Oh my gosh. All right, so first we're starting off with an easy tomato sauce. Yes, but the common ingredients in everything we're doing today are tomatoes and eggplants, because everybody has a ton of them. They've got neighbors showing up with them and leaving them anonymously. <laughs> uh, farm stands, CSAs, everybody's got them. So that's why we're focusing on both of those today. Okay. And all of the great produce, everything we have here today is from our friends at Whole Foods in Hadley. Great. And uh, great local tomatoes, local eggplants. So I'm going to start out briefly by showing you how to peel a tomato. You want to peel the tomatoes because if you don't, uh, they'll get stuck, the, the skins in the sauce will get stuck between your teeth or in the roof of your mouth, and it's impossible to take a tomato skin off the roof of your mouth. Besides the aesthetic difference, though, if you leave skin on when you're doing something, does it ruin the flavor? No. Okay. There is no difference. You'll just end up having to pluck it out of your teeth. Oh, it's I have no shame. It's fun to yeah. eat, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, I mean, you, you can go like uh, uh, 10 bites with that, and all of a sudden you'll get one. But, uh, so the, but the taste doesn't change. So no, really no flavor in the taste. It, it's really an aesthetic thing. Oh, so if I eat it amongst friends, who cares? Exactly. <laughs> Unless you're all sitting simultaneously, you can't speak because you're plucking. That's why I always get floss around. Yeah, and, you know, flossing at the table is the best. <laughs> so now, uh, what we have classy, here, yeah. so if you do peel the tomatoes, there are uh, two major ways of doing it. First is you put it in boiling water. And then uh, for one minute, and then you drop it in ice water. We call it plunging it in ice water because you want to stop the cooking. Because going in there, even for the one minute in the ice water, in the, in the boiling water, will start to cook it. And you'll see uh, that just by putting in the ice water, the skin just comes right off that way. You can have a paring knife uh, to help you take some of the bits off, but it comes right off. Chef Bill, I don't know if you know this, we learned uh, why it explodes uh, last uh, week on the show. Did you know why? Uh, why? So here's what happens. The, all the, the moisture inside the tomato yep. gets so warm, it goes out and explodes, and that's why it breaks. That's the coolest thing. Right? I've never, I didn't know, I, 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 you always learn something on Mass Appeal. <laughs> now there's another way of doing it, and that is, uh, you cut the tomato in half uh, this way. And it's easier with a, uh, a larger knife, which I have just out of camera range here. And so now you've got the two halves here. Okay. So now what you can do is you take your, your everyday uh, grater uh, that you have at home and just rub, run it down like that. And it's going to go all the way through. Now. Interesting. But now what about your um, fingers? Your well, funny you should mention that because I happen to have here, I didn't put it on, uh, what a Teflon. Is going it's, on it's a Teflon glove because doesn't everybody have one in their kitchen? If you need that to cook, maybe you shouldn't be cooking. You might want or and the reason oh. being because uh, if you really press down too hard, you are going to be losing fingertips. So, uh, or you're going to uh, not be able to get as much on there. So that's why this is not my recommended way of doing it. <laughs> Can I try it with this wacky glove? Please do. But to be honest, it is kind of an easier way. <laughs> it is easier. But uh, the other is actually the other is actually easier just to look because you've got a couple of steps. Uh, let's move past. Let's, let's move past. Let's okay. move past now, it. say you want to take the seeds out. Still cut the tomato in half uh, with the uh, put the stem end on the side and just pluck them out this way because uh, they're like little tunnels and the seeds will come right out. I personally don't care about seeds. Some people do. Is it another thing? W will that influence the flavor? Not at all. And you won't even be plucking them out of your teeth. No one will ever know. It's, it's, it's actually a visual thing. Now, what if you um, put it through a cheesecloth later? Would that... Uh, I think well, like you, would you would lose all of your pulp. And so you want the pulp to give you body. See, clearly I've never made uh, tomato sauce Well, that's before. all right. See, that's Don't why I'm here to help. <laughs> I won't be afraid. Be okay, afraid. so moving on now. Moving on. I've, I just put the oil in the warm pan, and I'm tossing in the eggplant, where it'll saute for about five or six minutes or so. Uh, we've got different kinds of eggplants. You can use whatever kind you want. Uh, I like these two. These are, uh, and there's so many local ones. This is a uh, called an American eggplant, a Triviata, uh, the dark one. This one is called a Calliope eggplant. There's just so many varieties. There are Japanese ones. They're all going to be and terrific. Seth grows white eggplants. I do. I grow white eggplants at home. Thanks for noticing. Um, <laughs> can I cut this one in half to show people the inside? Please do. See if it's anything special. Let's see. Oh, we might well, be actually, well, th that there I we go. I happen to have the sharp knife right here. Oh, see. Look at that. Where, oh, oops, sorry. Oh, the inside. I just cool. reached across because now let's cut this one. All right. Let's see. And so you can see there's so many similarities. So. Oh. And now what you want to do, it doesn't matter doing it this way, but if you're roasting it, uh, after you roast it, you can pluck the seeds out. But we can save that for eggplant day another time. Okay. okay. We'll have eggplant day uh, at some point. Uh, yes, we will. So now, because it's going to keep coming. And so you're just going to saute this for uh, uh, about five or ten minutes. Meanwhile, oh. I've got all of these uh, tomatoes right here. I'm going to toss them in earlier because this is live TV. 
And uh, this is uh, just, I'd already peeled these. You can see the seeds are already there. How many tomatoes is that, roughly, would you say? Uh, this total thing is about 10 large tomatoes. Oh. So I'm going to be putting half in because I'm saving half for later on. Juice is good. And you know what I think is important for everybody at home to know, too? Uh, a lot of farm stands, I know we, we ran into this last year, sell tomato seconds. They so if, do. If you're doing things like a stew or a soup, uh, they sell the tomatoes that have dropped on the ground or aren't as aesthetically pleasing for a fraction of the price. Those are perfect, and uh, those are called drops often because, as you say, they've dropped off the vine. Uh, they're cheaper. I've seen them at, at 25 cents a pound even. Oh, yeah. And they might be bruised, as you say, and they are perfect for sauce. And uh, what you're going to find uh, after cooking this for not even 20 minutes, this is going to really uh, uh, cook down. It's going to be softer. So when you get the drops, you don't have to pay the three, four, five dollars a pound for the perfect ones. You can end up with a spectacular sauce. And then the great thing is, you can make a ton of it because you freeze it and have it in the middle of winter with mm -hmm. all of your comfort food. That's exactly cool right. Food. Because uh, we, with this time of year, you get the great tomatoes. Say you decide to make this, uh, uh, want to make this in January, you can pay a lot of money for like a hydroponic tomato, but it's not the same yeah. and so you're gonna get this flavor and you might say gee I don't really feel like doing it you might think it seems like a, a lot of work it's gonna pay off not only when you eat it now but in January when you go to have it absolutely so we saute it up for now how long do we do it for roughly this is gonna be about 20 minutes and uh, and it really is that fast it starts to break down now you've got the option of 20 minutes for a fast sauce I'm gonna be adding some white wine to that I've got some fresh basil uh, salt and pepper garlic and that's it now if you go 20 minutes it's gonna be a great flavor if you go longer it's going to break down uh, which is good it's going to be less chunky uh, it's going to be a little bit thicker because by doing this with the lid off a lot of the uh, liquid will evaporate so if you like a thinner sauce or a thicker sauce it's really up to you for how long you want to cook it. And we're also later in the show, we're going to use a lot of these similar ingredients to make a stew. We're starting a stew in the exact same method, but with more vegetables in it, it gives you more versatility and a different flavor. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And that's a great way to know how we can utilize all those tomatoes. So we're look looking forward to that. Coming up.